Right now at 10, Russians continue to push into Ukraine, but they're facing a tougher challenge than they expected. It is not a military operation. It's just not aggression. It's war. People are dying. And people across the country are spending their weekend standing up for Ukrainians. Hear the message of activists as they are spreading outside the Capitol tonight. And later, a longtime Madison Supper Club says the last call. We're going to catch up with the owner of Smokey's Club. That's all coming up at 10. <laughs> We begin tonight's coverage in Ukraine with an emotional reunion. A Ukrainian woman across the border into Hungary today with some precious cargo, a stranger's children. What you're seeing right now is a moment where they reunited with their mother. But it's been a very different scene inside Ukraine at times over the past three days. Right now, you're looking at a live picture of the capital city of Kyiv. Things look pretty peaceful right now, but Russian troops are reportedly closing in while Ukraine's president has vowed to continue fighting. And overnight, there was a massive explosion in Kyiv. You'll see that flash in the back right corner of your screen. Officials haven't said what exploded or if anyone was hurt. Eve, that's a Russian missile hitting an apartment building. The mayor says miraculously no deaths or injuries were reported. In an unprecedented move, the U.S. and EU are expelling certain Russian banks from the global banking system known as SWIFT. Meanwhile, the White House says it will spend $350 million in aid to support Ukraine. In the meantime, we're supplying defensive weaponry and economic assistance to Ukraine. Germany is also planning to give anti-tank weapons and surface-to-air missiles to Ukraine in the coming days. And Ohio's governor is taking things a step further tonight. He's stopping the sale of Russian-made vodka. That includes the Green Mark and the Russian Standard brands. The governor also says he plans to fly Ukrainian flags over the state house in Columbus. And people across the country are standing up for Ukraine tonight with protests in dozens of major cities, including in front of the White House in Washington, D.C. We also saw a sizable protest today in downtown Madison outside of the state capitol where hundreds of people pledged their support for Ukrainians' fight for their country. Our Talia Mahodin reports. At the state capitol, a sea of blue and yellow for Ukraine. This is an important message to people who are there that they are not alone and people all over the world are standing with them. UW grad student Yuri Vasyuk among hundreds standing up against Russian aggression. They are hiding in bomb shelters. This is the least they can do. Thousands of miles away from his home and family in Ukraine, for Vasyuk, these past few days have been terrifying. I couldn't do anything, anything except just checking how do they feel, whether there, I are in safe place if you can say that there is safe place now in Ukraine. It's a feeling many at the rally can relate to. My family and friends sending me videos of what is happening actually in Ukraine. And it's horrible. For me, it is horrible, it is terrifying, it's sad. Peter Pisarev is Russian with family in Ukraine and he says Putin's actions don't represent the will of his people. Russians never wanted war. It's sad what is happening now. It's terrifying. I want this war to stop. But he's not sure of the way forward. But I'm not a politician. I'm, I'm no soldier. I'm, I cannot help much. Vasyuk too is uncertain of what the future will hold. But he's placing his faith in his countrymen. Ukrainian soldiers who are dying now, they're dying for a great cause. They're dying for their land and for the independence of their people. With pride in his nation. In Madison, Tehli Muhyiddin, Fox 47, News at 9. Protesters say while the average American can't offer military support, they are asking people to help raise awareness about the issue and to contact their representatives and push them to take more action. Leaders in Madison are condemning the invasion in Ukraine tonight. In a statement, the mayor and the Common Council said their hearts are going out to the people in Ukraine and said the U.S. and their allies must continue their fight for peace and bring this conflict to an end.
As thousands of Ukrainians leave their country, we're seeing signs of humanity. People in Poland are giving refugees blankets, food, and water. The UN says at least 150,000 people already have fled Ukraine for Poland and other neighboring countries. And there's also ways that you can help here in Wisconsin, but you should also be aware of where your donations are going. The Better Business Bureau says that you need to watch out for typos and read up on which charities that you're going to be donating to. And we've got a full list of verified places that you can download, as well as the latest headlines on our Channel 3000 News app. It's free and available in the App Store. New tonight, 18 people are out of their homes after an apartment fire in Janesville. This happened around 615 in the 1300 block of Laramie Lane. Firefighters say it was sparked by an electrical issue in a hallway. The fire caused about $30,000 of damage. Okay, to weather now. This is a live look at the Capitol tonight. It is a quiet weekend in the weather office, and meteorologist Austin Kopnitsky is outside right now. He's got your certified most accurate forecast. Yeah, and sunshine and near average temperatures does meet a quiet week here in the weather office, but we're still tracking some rain and snow chances near the end of our forecast. But for what we're looking at for the rest of this weekend, some pretty great conditions. 27 degrees outside right now. Doesn't quite feel like it. However, we are still dealing with a breeze as of right now. So wind chills are dipping down into the teens and lower 20s. But overall temperatures are only going to drop down to the lower 20s overnight tonight. So it's still going to feel quite nice outside. Doppler track looks great. We're not going to see even cloud cover for tonight. Mostly clear skies. And that's going to be ahead of another sunny Sunday ahead of us. Now our current temperatures looking pretty consistent. We're generally in those mid 20s for most of us. And we're not going to cool down too much more thanks to the southwesterly breeze that's still pretty strong between around 10 and 20 miles per hour. So it is going to be quite breezy early on tonight, a low of about 20 degrees, but with mostly clear skies, we're going to see more sun again tomorrow. How long is that sunny streak going to last? However, I will have a look at your extended forecast coming up. Thanks so much, Austin. In other news tonight, the search continues for a missing UW lacrosse student. Campus community members and people from around the state joined the family of Hamoud Fall this afternoon. The 25-year-old was last seen on Sunday walking alone in lacrosse. Several UWL students took part in today's search, including some of Fall's friends. It means a lot to have community support. Hamoud's such a great person, and, and he deserves to have all these people out here looking for him. State rep and family friend Samba Balda brought a search group from Madison today. Anyone with information on Falls location is asked to please contact La Crosse Police. Boyd says they've made an arrest in connection to a shooting earlier this month. 33-year-old Marcus Crenshaw was arrested last night on several charges, including first-degree reckless injury. Officers say that Crenshaw shot at a 43-year-old man in the city on February 10th. That man later showed up at a hospital and is expected to be okay. At least one person is dead after a shooting in a Las Vegas hookah lounge. This happened earlier this morning. Police say that 14 people were shot. At least 11 of them are expected to be okay. Officers say the shooting started after a fight during a party and no one has been arrested. In New York City today, community activists marked the 10th anniversary of the shooting death of Trayvon Martin. Martin was unarmed, an unarmed 17-year-old when he was shot to death by a neighborhood watch captain, George Zimmerman, back in 2012. Zimmerman claimed that he was acting in self-defense. Martin's mother reflected on his death today. When you carry a child for nine months and you see your heart walking outside of your body, you never lose that love. And I repeat all the time, not even the death of my son would separate me from the love of my son. In a video posted today, former President Barack Obama said, we still have a long way to go in the fight for civil rights, and it is important that young people continue to raise their voice. Turning to our COVID headlines tonight, most Americans will no longer need to wear a mask indoors. According to the new CDC metrics, only 28% of people are currently living in an area where you should still wear a mask. Under these new guidelines in our viewing area only, Green County shows high activity. That means that a mask is recommended indoors. All others are in that low to medium category get to a point where the likelihood of someone uh, having COVID, spreading COVID in an indoor space, you know, gets so low that the, you know, whatever hassle you want to attach to, to mask wearing um, probably doesn't uh, decrease transmission that much because there's, there's nothing to, to transmit in those spaces.
Just a reminder that Dane County's mask mandate is set to officially be lifted on Tuesday. A CBS executive is expected to be the next president of CNN. Chris Licht currently runs The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. He previously ran the CBS Morning Show. CNN Pres President Jeff Zucker resigned earlier this month after having a relationship with a co-worker. New tonight at 10, after 69 years of serving up steaks and memories, the last customers are dining tonight at Madison's oldest supper club. Smokey's Club opened back in 1953 and moved into its current spot on University Avenue, less than two miles from campus. I apologize, Camp Randall, 15 years later. This winter, the restaurant's owner announced that this season would be their last and the steakhouse would be closed to make way for a new five-story apartment development. It's so great to see, and, and, and I've seen people I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, everybody wanted their last dinner here, you know, and it's just been really great. It's been a great tribute. For decades, Smokey's was the well-known post-game hub for the Badger fans. In its heyday, owners say that the restaurant turned a $14,000 profit on Saturday night. You can read much more about Smokey's and how parts of its menu will live on when a new restaurant opens up this spring on our website, channel3000.com. Still ahead on your news three now at 10. It is the last laugh to remember. I always told people that guys like Kevin live so guys like me have stories to tell. We'll hear from family and friends of auto racing champion Kevin Olson as he gets one final victory lap around one of his favorite tracks. Stay with us. for your family. Do good things in the community. Help out your neighbors. You've been there for so many others. Now, we're here for you. Your local Wisconsin Energy and Emergency Assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your heat and power on. Apply now for a hand up. Ford Edge impresses with savvy street smarts, lots of tech, and you know what? Go shop this SUV at the Auto Show. It's Auto Show time. The best time to buy a Ford SUV with on-the-go connectivity. Tech to help you drive confidently. Flexibility for cargo and crew. Plus special Auto Show offers to help you bring one home today. Order your Ford SUV during Auto Show to lock in a special flex buy offer. Plus get an extra 1,000 retail order bonus. He should have used his power to serve Wisconsin. Instead, Ron Johnson served himself. An investigation found that Ron Johnson pushed through a special tax loophole that benefited his own family's business. After the loophole became law, Ron Johnson cashed out of the company for $5 million. Ron Johnson has doubled his wealth since taking office. Look up the facts and tell Ron Johnson to stop passing tax laws that benefit himself. I want to have a million dollars when I retire. Oh, great goal. So where do I start? Well, first you set up automatic transfers into savings. That can add up pretty quickly. For me, working on putting $1,000 into an emergency fund got me in a good saving habit. Already on it. Then put together a plan to get rid of debt and maximize your investments. You know, Summit helped me do it. Oh, that's great. I love how Summit gives people the knowledge and confidence to go after their goals. It's your money. Own it. Summit Credit Union. Everyone deserves stylish and quality furniture. So I'm calling all Bobs to help get the word out. Like this, Bob. Me! Bobs has the everyday values you deserve without a single phony sale or gimmick. Like my complete five-piece Tremont bedroom set, only $9.99. My Blake dining set with six chairs or four chairs and a storage bench, only $5.99. My Lux sectional, all four pieces, only $19.99. And of course, my state-of-the-art Bobapedic prize queen mattress, only $5.99. Shop what's in stock, in store, or at mybobs.com. Tomorrow morning, we'll have the latest developments on the conflict in Ukraine. And we're looking at milder temperatures. We'll give you a look in detail of what to expect heading into your Sunday morning from 630 to 8. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. 
There wasn't a race today at Angel Park Speedway in Sun Prairie, but there was a victory lap for this man, Kevin Olson. Olson was killed in a crash in Rock County earlier this month, but as photojournalist Brian Troxel found out, family and friends make sure to have this auto racing champion make sure he knows that he's not forgotten. Knowing that dad was going to come home here to Sun Prairie. The family of Kevin Olson watched Saturday as he lapped the track he loved one last time. So many victories here. But his family weren't the only ones Kevin inspired over the years. Such a following, you know, a hero, a mentor, and... I don't think that he had an enemy. As kids, you know, you don't really, you don't really understand it all, or we didn't, I don't think I understood it all. Um, but you could see the admiration of these guys when it came to my dad. And the impact he made on others on display at Angel Park as more than 100 people showed up to tell stories and memorialize a man who meant so much to not only their community. It was an honor for me to throw the final checkered flag for my friend Kevin but across the nation as well. It's not just his racing, too. I mean, he was obviously popular with his pranks and popular with his racing, but he was just such a fun guy and such a good guy to be around. People loved him. People, he, he made you love him, and um, he was... He was just a great guy, and he could make a friend, you know, and down in Texas, and and we'd be down there every every year visiting, and we just we bounced around with him, and and we loved, you know, we loved his friends, and they meant everything to him. Proof that his greatness went far beyond the track. He was one of a kind, and he will be missed by us dearly every single day of our lives, and by all of these people who have shown up over the last two days. In his career, Olsen was a five-time champion of the Badger Midget Auto Racing Association. He will be buried in Illinois. Olsen was 70 years old. In more local news tonight, the Progress Center for Black Women is celebrating more than three years of work this weekend. The center hosted open house events over the past week. People got a chance to learn about the center's programming and how to become a member. While the center's open house week wrapped up today, organizers say they're always looking for volunteers. Middle and high school students from around the state are competing this weekend in Madison. It's the Kid Wind Challenge where students test homemade wind turbines in front of a panel of expert judges. Organizers say that the challenge is test teamwork and hands-on thinking. You know, renewable energy is such a growing industry. There's a lot of need for people to work in this industry. So this is a way to inspire people to, to really get interested and understand the, the physics and the, the science and the engineering behind wind energy. This weekend's event also featured career talks by experts in the clean energy industry. The winner of the challenge will get a chance to compete in the national championship in San Antonio this May. I could see uh, you being in uh, one of those competitions <laughs> when you were a kid, Austin. Oh, uh, you know it. Yeah, I was actually into coding whenever I was that age. I was big into that. and. Uh, I did, I'm not using any of that today, but <laughs> I do also really love weather, and I'm absolutely loving the forecast for the rest of this weekend and for most of this next week because we're going to stay dry all the way through this next Thursday, and then late in the day on Friday is actually going to be that next chance for precipitation. Mild at times this week, quite a few days in the 40s are expected, and we're also looking at some rain chances near the end of this forecast. We still do have a snow chance that we're watching out for, but most of the precipitation that we have in the forecast is likely going to fall as rain as of right now. Current Doppler track, it's looking great. We got to zoom back here and really taking a peek at the whole state. Nothing's going on, so we're zooming out even more. And we got to really dig deep to actually find any precipitation near us. And right now it's down towards Memphis. So we're looking really good to go. Another dry day ahead of us tomorrow with a lot of sunshine. And we're going to see temperatures starting out in the 20s by the afternoon. Some mid-30s are going to return. And we're going to see more mild conditions coming back here for our Monday. Day. That's the first day that we're expecting the 40s to actually jump right back into this forecast. High temperature trend does show quite a few days in the 40s. Average high temperature is about 35 degrees as of 
right now and we're getting there. It's slowly rising, but most of these temperatures for much of this next 10 days are actually going to be right around average or a little bit above. A lot of this winter has been uh, quite cold, but now it does look like much of this next week is going to be a little above average, but it does look like beyond that extended forecast. There is some cold air that's going to be building up here just out to our west. Time will tell to see if that moves towards us or not. So hopefully we can keep that at bay, but right now we're about 10 degrees warmer than yesterday at this time. So it's already off to a warmer start tonight. Overnight lows are only going to fall back down to those lower 20s and that extended forecast does show those rain chances here for Friday and Saturday that low overnight of about 34 degrees. So we're getting very close to those snow chances. If we see those temperatures dropping a little bit in the next few days, we may have to introduce some snow. But as of right now, it's looking like mainly a rain event for that upcoming Friday and Saturday. Brad. Thanks so much, Austin. Some baseball news tonight, and folks, it's not good news. CBS Sports reports that the owners and players remain pretty far apart on a deal to end the lockout. Spring training games were supposed to start this weekend for all 30 teams, but the players are still locked out. Monday is MLB's deadline in, for a deal in order to open on time. Both sides say that they will meet again tomorrow. But that's not stopping Brewers fans from getting ready for the season. These photos come from the team's official Twitter page. The crew hosted their annual Arctic tailgate this morning, marking the first opportunity for fans to buy single game tickets. Right now, opening day is still set for March 31st. Coming up, the Badgers are moving a bit closer to a conference title. Highlights from today's pivotal matchup with Rutgers coming up next in sports. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. I grew up working in my family's supper clubs. This is where it started with us as far as the fish that we serve at Culver's today. We source the finest cod and batter each filet by hand and always cook it to order. That beautiful golden brown color and flaky on the inside. The fish fry is a Midwest tradition. It's about families coming together. I love bringing this tradition to guests everywhere. Mom and Dad would be proud. Welcome to Delicious. Here's the newest spin on Wisconsin Lottery Scratch Games. It's X times the money. A new family of games with prices from $1 to $20. The bigger the ticket, the bigger the multiplier and top prize. All the way up to $200,000. Instant scratch games from the Wisconsin Lottery. Odds are you'll like them. Guys, if you're suffering from erectile dysfunction, Peak Performance for Men has a natural solution that can help you today. That's right. Stop wasting money on pills and inferior technology that hurts and just masks your ED. Fix it for good. The best part? Our ED treatment is non-invasive, painless, and you can get back to your natural functionability after just a few short in-office sessions. Call us today and mention this ad and your initial consultation is free. We are Madison's trusted specialist and only national erectile dysfunction provider. Call Peak Performance for Men today. This is the purpose-built Ford F-150. It's a beast with brains. It, you know what? Skip this video. Go see one at the auto show. It's auto show time. The best time to buy a Ford F-150 with ways to power up this and that. Work smarter. Muscle for most anything. Plus, special auto show offers to help you bring one home today. Now get a 2021 F-150 with 0.9% financing for 60 months plus 1,000 auto show bonus cash. Weather satellites are our weather eyes in the sky. The next weather satellite is ready for launch, and much of its development and weather information comes from right here in Madison. The UW has been involved in this since the very, very beginning. See what goes into the Ghost T satellite, Sunday at 10. News 3 Now is always on. Get the Channel 3000 app, activate the push alerts, and we will send you breaking news, traffic, and weather alerts as it happens. The Channel 3000 app. Get it now. Powered by News 3 Now. You're a hard worker. Provide for your family. Do good things in the community. Help out your neighbors. You've been there for so many others. Now, we're here for you. Your local Wisconsin Energy and Emergency Assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your heat and power.
power on. Apply now for a hand up. The race for the Big Ten title is heating up after Michigan State's upset of Purdue. Wisconsin is closer to clinching the crown, but first they would need to pick up a couple of big wins this week. Starting tonight against Rutgers, Badgers trying to avenge the loss they suffered a couple weeks ago on their home court. Well, they're rolling in this first half between Brad Davison and Chucky Hepburn. Badgers build a comfortable lead. They're up by nine at halftime. Well, second half Rutgers, they're a completely different team. They close up the score, then Geo Baker's jumper pulls them in front. Now that's going me back and forth down the stretch. Johnny Davis drives inside for the lead and then Hepburn's going to call game. Another close one, but Wisconsin wins it 66 to 61. Davis finishes with a game high 19. Badgers in sole possession of the Big Ten. It didn't take long for Wisconsin women's hockey to find its rhythm again. The Badgers opened the WCHA playoffs with a win over Bemidji State. Might have been close, but hey, a win is a win. And all they need is one more to sweep the best of three series. UW already up 1-0 with a lengthy power play ahead of them. That's because Bemidji State's number 18 got a major plus ejection. So, Nicole Lamantia, she capitalizes on that opportunity, clears the traffic for goal number two. Well, how about another one for good measure? Darrell Watts fires left side to put the Badgers up 3-0. Wisconsin outshoots Bemidji State 24-2 in the first period alone. That propels them to a 5-0 shutout. Badgers heading to their 12th straight final faceoff, and they're going to take on Ohio State next Saturday. At last, championship Saturday for the state wrestling tournament. Across the divisions, 20 wrestlers from our area are all hoping to call themselves a state champ. And one who's determined to make that happen is Stoughton's Nicolar Rivera. This whole tournament, he has said no one is getting in his way of winning it all. The senior caps his perfect season with a 20-3 tech fall. Rivera wins his third state title. And following his dominant and emotional win, the Viking also shared where he's going to continue his career at Wisconsin. Oh my gosh, I can't even put it into, into words. It was awesome. It was awesome. More than awesome, man. It was, it was great. Why Wisconsin? The people, the atmosphere, and uh, the coaches, they're, they're amazing. The coaches, the teammates, it's a place where I think that my skill level is going to jump a lot. Elsewhere in Division I, Madison LaFollette Jackson, Jackson Mankowski was a man on a mission. The 220 pound junior capped off a perfect season with a 12 to 6 decision and became the first Lancer to win a state title in nearly three decades. And at 170, Aiden Sinclair came in ranked number one and he left number one. The Milton sophomore takes his man down en route to a 14 to 9 decision. It means everything to me. I honestly wouldn't even contribute this success to me. I'd contribute to the people around me. I'm so grateful for everything my coaches and my family put into me. They drive me to practice. I can't drive yet. I uh, just give them my driver's head for a while. And uh, my, my coaches, they spent so much time with me, making me the man I am today. And down in Division II, Dodgeville got the party started first at 106. Charlie Mike picks his man up and takes him down for two, goes on to win 7-0. He's crowned a state champ. Up next at 113, his teammate Reed Spurley follows suit. The back, point part, the back point's part of his 6-2 win as the Dodgers crown two champions. Well, Lodi's Zane Licht made school history tonight. His takedown helped him earn a 3-0 decision to become the first Blue Devil champ since 2009. And Evansville's Danny Heiser not only got the win, but he did it in dramatic fashion, forcing overtime and then winning by fall to claim the 120-pound title. I love it. Awesome. I've been working so hard for it for so long. I'm so excited it finally happened. It feels like I'm on top of the world. I just trained a whole year to finally reach my goal. I just can't thank my coaches enough for getting me in the practice room and pushing me to my limits. It just means so much. Are you ready to make junk disappear? I am so looking forward to this. We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. Any first item removed, just $89. Some numbers are thrilling. Some impressive. Some just right. After an accident, there's one critical number. The number that helps you get your life back by factoring in your needs for today and tomorrow. That's where Habish Habish and Rotier's numbers really add up. With over 90 years of client successes and 13 offices to help you wherever you are. 
No other personal injury law firm is better suited to get the amount that's right for you. Instead of being impartial, media outlets have become advocates for the Democrat Party. They got Joe Biden, who campaigned from his basement, elected president. Now they're covering up the disasters his policies created by attacking and censoring anyone who exposes the failures. But they can't hide inflation, higher gas prices, and rising crime from the people devastated by them. I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message. I will continue to ask questions and uncover the truth. This may sound strange, but you've been here before. You were here when this wrench was turned, and when this line was drawn, oh, and when this stitch was sewn. Because you inspired the new Lexus ES to be, well, more you. So thank you. We hope you like your work. with this one. It's gonna bring the house down. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought this was a sports bar. It's the biggest game of the year. Why didn't we just watch it at your house? I can't. I lost all my favorite sports channels. That's terrible. Oh great, it's getting worse. I got DirecTV Stream. No local sports channels, no NFL network. Not a great choice then. Catastrophe. Limited channel lineups are evil. Did they choreograph this? Choose Spectrum TV and get the sports channels you want. News 3 Now's Call for Action team advocates for you. Getting through when you can't. We hear comments like, oh, thank you for listening, and nobody cared. Asking the right questions. Your customers are so frustrated, <laughs> yeah. you hope to make that right. And getting results. They sent a water heater the next day after you told me you made the call. When you're getting nowhere, we have the team and the resources to get answers. Call for Action, only on News 3 Now. We're taking action for you. Are you ready to make junk disappear? I am so looking forward to this. We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. <gasps> Any first item removed? Just $89. News 3 Now, your vaccine information headquarters. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Things are looking pretty clear, huh? Yeah, I'm loving the forecast for this week. I mean, it really started today with the sunny conditions. It was breezy out there, however, today, and that's not going to be the case for tomorrow. Very similar in terms of temperatures and sunshine, but we're just not going to see that strong breeze tomorrow. So a little bit nicer there for our Sunday and even nicer as we move into this next week. Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, all expected to be in the 30s or 40s. Rather a bit of a cool down in the 30s on Thursday and some rain chances after. All right. Good night, everyone.